Thanks for staying with us now. Diversity includes all the ways in which people differ, um, compassing the, difference, the different characteristics that makes one individual or group different from another. Equity is the fair treatment, access, opportunity, and advancement of all people, while at the same time striving to identify and eliminate barriers that have prevented the full participation of some groups. Inclusion, on the other hand, is the act of creating environments in which any individual or group can be and feel welcomed, respected, supported, and valued to fully participate. So when you think of Nigeria side by side with diversity, equity, and inclusion, what do you see? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 you see, what do you see when you see when you think Nigeria and diversity, inclusion, and equity? For for me, what? <laughs> well, we I fail. Know, I don't know why I keep thinking a of big federal. Failure. I keep thinking federal of federal character, character mm. because of this. But we both know that we do not have that currently in Nigeria because of we uh, the fact that it's not evenly distributed across the the border. So, I, but I would leave this to. Our guests to actually what is smart to actually diverse. So we actually we we are, yeah. So we actually yes. diverse in terms of who we are as a people. Mm. But when you go to organizations, it is actually tough for you to see that diversity. Um, there's every likelihood that I mean there are some organizations you just know clearly that the head is an Igbo man <laughs> because, <laughs> because of the the kind of you know. Uh, I don't know. In terms of in terms of equity, I don't see that playing out a lot in most of our organizations. Then in terms of um, inclusion, hmm, that one is a bit tough as well. It's something that I think there's a lot of room that needs to be addressed. Yeah, there's a not no. I mean, there's a there's a there's a lot of room for for improvement in that in that sphere. Okay. So on that note, let me keep quiet and bring in our expert. <laughs> Dr. OK, 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 sorry, has over 20 years of experience as a consultant. He is currently the Africa Regional Vice President for um, Hofshed Insight. This, your name has come again. Also <laughs> doubles as the Managing Director for Hofshed Insight Nigeria. Hofshed. Uh, now, Nasabi, Dr. <laughs> Kere has a bachelor's degree from the Federal University of Technology, Oweri, Nigeria. He holds an action learning based um, MBA uh, from Business School, Netherlands, and doctorate degree in business administration from the same university. Now, Dr. Morel Shulman Onyechi, on the other hand, is a language and culture expert originally from the Netherlands. She has extensive experience in the research consulting and teaching environment. She holds degree in language and culture, um, culture studies and communication um, sciences and a PhD in language science and technology. She is a certified organizational cultural expert and she's joined in live with us in studio. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dr. OK and Dr. Morel. Thank you. Now, this matter, eh? <laughs> First of all, Dr. OK went to Netherlands to go and collect degree and brought wife for his brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is a fantastic way <laughs> to bring diversity. <laughs> You know, I have to throw that in. You're just amazing. Amazing. Thank you so oh, much for coming. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, so, uh, I mean, when you sent me that report, first of all, maybe I would like to come to Meryl, if she can break down what that report, what you guys found out. And, you know, um, when you sent it to me, I looked at it, I said, ah, now, wow, we have a very long way to go when it yeah. comes to yeah. things like this. And yeah. how even informed are we about or how aware are we that this is actually a problem that we need to start being deliberate about solving yeah right so yeah. maybe you should break it down for us Muriel. Yeah. what were your findings <laughs> <laughs> thank you 
All right, so diversity, equity, and inclusion is a very important topic in global research because it has been shown in many different countries that it actually helps your business thrive if you have a good DEI strategy and if people feel like they belong in your organization. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to find out how is the state of DEI in Nigerian companies, especially because Nigeria is one of the most diverse countries, countries in the in world. The world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And being like, as a people, because we are so diverse, how is this actually reflected in our organizations? So we set out to investigate um, companies listed on Nigerian stock exchange. So we included 148 companies, largest organizations in Nigeria, and we analyzed them on four parameters. So we look at age diversity, mm -hmm. we look at gender diversity, mm -hmm. so how many women and men are uh, on the boards and on the excos. We look at ethnic diversity, and finally we look at educational diversity, and there we're looking at whether people come from different educational backgrounds, so not everybody is coming from the same engineering, engineering or, or, or management yeah. degree, etc. And we analyze the companies in terms of their leaders, and that's the board and the executive committee. Right? And what we found is that um, there's, like you said, there's a lot of room for improvement, actually. So maybe not surprisingly, Nigerian companies tend to score best on the parameter of educational background. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people <laughs> that value education in Nigeria, and mm -hmm. that's being reflected very well in the report. So you're seeing that people, for example, have both an engineering degree and a management yeah, degree. Okay. So the scores there are pretty good. But for the other three parameters, and that's gender, age, gender, age, and, and ethnic, 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 yeah, yeah. ethnicity, the scores are not sufficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there you're really seeing that certain groups are underrepresented. Mm -hmm. Let me come to yeah, you, yeah. Uh, Dr. Okeri. Why is equity, inclusion, and diversity, why is it important? Now, I'll tell you a story, um, a very interesting story, if you, if, you, if you may. They found out about 13 years ago that women were more likely to face a fatal accident in a car than men. Wow. By accident, it was found out. And, you know, you wonder, we've been making cars in the world for over 100 years. Why is it that just 13 years ago, 13 years ago, in the 2010s, was when we realized all that, that women were more susceptible to accidents? Yeah. Why do you fatal. think so? Fatal accidents. Why, why do you think so? In, I have in no car? idea. Okay. Um, how do they test cars? Men. Not just men. You know they put dummies in the, mm -hmm. in the car? Yes. So the dummies that were put in the car, crash test dummies, mm -hmm. were made after the archetypal like, American man. That's oh. Uh, uh, so a certain, <laughs> a certain height, just a little bit taller than I am, and a bit, a bit bigger than I am, mm -hmm. you would have the crash test dummies in that size. Now, women generally are a little bit smaller than men. And uh, if a woman is pregnant, for instance, she's much more likely to suffer damage in an accident. All of these things were not put into consideration when, when building crash test dummies and testing vehicles. And why, was that? why is that so? Yeah. Why is that so? Because there were no female yes. en engineers. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> testing. So <laughs> it was actually a female engineer they are brought, this their, out. They brought it to their knowledge. Yes. Mm. And then, uh, I'm not going to name the, the, the car company so that I, I don't get sued, mm. but it was a particular car company which is known for safety now that they actually uh, had that and they began to design cars considering that it's not just men that drive vehicles, that women also drive vehicles as well. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that diversity, equity and inclusion brings, brings to you. It brings a completely different perspective you know, I'm Igbo. I, I was born here in Lagos, and I grew up here in Lagos. I speak Igbo, I speak Yoruba, I speak English, and I pretend that I can, I can speak French. <laughs> I pretend. So, <laughs> now, um, someone like me, I would say, would be very, very fortunate, because, you know, from, from, from birth, I'm sort of like, like, a, like, like an amphibian. I have gills, and I can swim in the water, in quote, and I can walk on land. Mm. I, can, I can blend with the Igbo culture, and I can blend with the Yoruba, Yoruba culture. culture. Mm. Right? And to add to that, I went to school in the Federal Government College Abuja, in the Federal Government College, a unity school, and I had this benefit before becoming uh, uh, an, an adult to work with people from different parts of, 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 of life from Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, but not everybody in Nigeria has that benefit. Yeah. So people like us perhaps might be able to see things differently from others. Yeah? We struggle in this country to understand each other. 
Our, our, our culture is one of our strongest points. But sometimes, perhaps our because we are, we, are, we are so collectivist in our thinking, we hold so dearly to what, is, what we're familiar with and what we, what we know and what we like that we're not willing to understand the, the other person, person. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you see all, this, all these challenges. So diversity, equity, and inclusion helps us to understand each other better, brings a completely different perspective. It can help you solve problems in business. And diverse teams uh, tend to outperform uh, homogeneous teams all the Fantastic. time. So let me, let me, let me qualify that. Well-managed diverse teams <laughs> outperform uh, homogeneous, well-managed homogeneous teams. Uh, well-managed diverse teams outperform them all the time. Hmm. It's the for the yes. <laughs> You're taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually learning. Now I'm going to look at it from the perspective. You said you, you looked you had uh, you looked at it from the perspective of the age, um, ethnic and the gender. Now we can assume that the gender we uh, we have females that are in positions of um, they can wield um, some sort of influence when they get higher because it's also said that the higher you go the fewer women you get to see mm -hmm. so is it possible that there will be a level of diversity in terms of gender representation in the in Nigeria um, as in the number of women uh, number of women yes. number of men okay. will they be equally represented in the higher status or higher kida in well, uh, in companies especially? Currently, no. Sadly, currently, no. Uh, gender diversity was one of the areas where corporate Nigeria underperformed Failed. significantly mm -hmm. uh, currently in our 2021 uh, report. Mm -hmm. um, 18 of the companies of Nigeria's biggest company, Nigeria's most prominent companies, don't have any female top manager or board member. You're kidding mm -hmm. me. No, no. 18, 18 of them. 18, yeah. 18 of them don't have any woman in a senior position, 18 of them. 35 of them uh, don't have any female on their boards. And 45 don't, uh, 45 don't have any female on their boards and 35 don't have any female in senior management. So 18, no. So all these people that are shouting women, women liberation, where are they? Why are they not meeting these companies? <laughs> so um, you, you see, um, diversity is indeed something that can we legislate it? Perhaps, mm. but how, how effective yeah. would that be? Mm. You know, people have to see the benefit. And it's not just having women, it's also having people from other ethnic groups. And their mm -hmm. competence yes. as well. Yeah, yes. having, yeah. you have to consider, it's not, it's not just, it's, it, you have to see the benefit in it. You have to see mm -hmm. the fact that, look, perhaps if we have women working in senior positions over here, perhaps we might have uh, less Me Too is, incidences happening in the organization. Sure. Sure. Perhaps. And, and sure. for those of us who don't understand what Me Too is, perhaps you can uh, dial in and ask. Mm. Google. He's <laughs> <Google. laughs> <Is> your <laughs> friend. <laughs> but I was going to come to mm. um, Dr. Merrill because mm. it, it, it seems like you... Uh, because anytime... I mean, it's interesting you talked about your background. I was born in the North. I'm from Edo State. I'm Benin. I was born in the North. I grew up in the North. Then, in fact, my grandfather had to threatening my mother hmm. that because I was supposed to go to ABU Zara I said you cannot have a child that is from this part of the world mm -hmm. and she does not even have any access or any link to her background her home state so for university she has, she to, has come to come back, back home. south mm -hmm. that was how I if not I was going to finish there in the north you know go to ABU Zara and all of that but when I see you getting married to an Igbo man mm -hmm. For me already, it already tells me that you are someone that has broken that cultural barrier where you see people and you just see people. Not you are now looking, oh, this is a Nigerian, this is a this, this is an Igbo man and all of that. So I wanted to ask you wh where you think the role of mindset plays when it comes mm. to that acceptance of diversity, the acceptance of equity and the acceptance of inclusion. Because there's a particular mindset that no matter what you say, <laughs> We are not doing it, we are not doing it. So what do you think that role of that mindset is? What do you I think? think that's a very good point and it's immensely important. Um, when I first moved here, I was on the job market, you know, I was open to new opportunities and 
um, Oke knows this story that um, I was introduced to a company who actually wanted a white woman in their company, mm -hmm. which I already found a little bit strange. Like that shouldn't be your criterion for oh, a white woman looks good for the company, but they were looking for a white woman. And so I interviewed with them. And then the MD told me flat out, the only reason why I would consider having you in my company is Could because be you are married to an Igbo. Ooh. And I, that Igbo-ness must have rubbed off. And at least Igbo men know how to do business, so maybe he has taught you some things. Wow, <laughs> what an interesting story. Yeah, and he was like, you're going to have to learn Igbo if you want to work here, because I only hire Igbo people and everybody speaks Igbo on the floor, because that's what I prefer. And I think that's exactly like the mindset that's not going to take you very far, because what you really should be looking for in your company is just the best person that can yes, do the job. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're only looking at the best Igbo that can do the job, yes, there's many great Igbos, but there's also many great people from other walks of life or other ethnic groups, etc. And that's what a true successful business strategy should look like. Mm -hmm. um, and without that mindset, I think the company is going to suffer at some yeah. point. Wow. Do you think that you know Nigeria what? will... Oh. Sorry, Dali, let me take a break. <laughs> <laughs> let us take a break. Let's go and drink. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> Now, if you just tuned in, we are having an amazing chat with Dr. Okia and Dr. Mm -hmm. Morel on enhancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in Nigeria. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So just a quick example before I come back to you, Isi. Mm -hmm. You see, on ways, we're actually diverse. I'm just thinking now. I have a Shekiri. <laughs> I have somebody from Akai how, how many men do you have? No, no, no. no. So, so <laughs> gender, gender <laughs> diversity. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, you're not going to drink that. So the thing is... We like to get invited to the show. I know. <laughs> no, so the, the thing is, everybody keeps asking, why is it an, an all-female team? And I need yes. to explain this, right? Like you rightly pointed out. Mm. Let me tell you something. There's some level of emotional power and intelligence that women have that men can never smell. What, so what we are trying to do, okay. and with the kind of appeal... <laughs> yeah, because we want to appeal to the minds of men. Now, men, they watch us, not the women. <laughs> so we want to appeal to the, a particular age, which is the youth, and we want to appeal to the mindset of a lot of men out there. So we need to be able to put the kinds of things that would attract those people. You are too tough. We need soft. <laughs> we don't need tough. <laughs> Just to put it out there. Well, you see, <laughs> you're going to go. Okay. We, you, it, what you said, um, Dr. Miro, re actually resonated with me because I went for an interview when I way back, and uh, he, what the MD actually said to me was, then I wasn't married, and said, why haven't you sold yourself? That you're supposed to sell yourself yeah, before yeah. you actually sell a product. And what I thought about is, it's not about you actually um, um, selling yourself is about you deciding whether you want to get married or not. Mm -hmm. So we have the cultural thing also playing out there for us. So why am I saying this? We are looking at ethnicity, we are looking at culture. Can we as a people rise above this? That's a very interesting question. Nero, is that for you or is that for me? Both of you. <laughs> so okay. you can take turns. Wow, that's a, that's a, a tough question. Uh, can we rise above it? Yes. Will we rise above it? Maybe. When, when will we rise ab above it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I have this theory that the African woman is the most discriminated human being on earth. Um, when you look at um, and you look at how power has been distributed in life, the African woman is the least powerful human being. Um, you know, hearing a story like yours, you know, yes. why are you not married? Mm -hmm. You know, they, you have all these societal barriers and expectations that exactly. are put on you um, as an African woman. I will say this very boldly. Uh, my mom grew up, grew up in a particular world. Mm. Uh, and I couldn't help her to level the playing field. Yes. My sisters and my wife mm. grew up in also a particular world and perhaps things had changed a bit from Since my mother's then. time, but certainly not where it should be. We should do something to make sure that the world that my daughter grows up in Absolutely. is not like that, that she will not be asked a question, a ridiculous question, question like, 
why are you not why you shouldn't haven't you sold yourself to a man to, a to man, marry you you know before. um yes. supposing you don't want to get married like i said you know it's and, a thing of choice and you would imagine unfortunately sometimes some organizations refuse to hire married women mm -hmm. some organizations refuse to hire married women young married women because they will be afraid that uh the young lady might end up you know getting pregnant and she will exactly. not be available uh, because she's going on maternity leave or something like that, <laughs> you know. And there are so many of these mm -hmm. idiosyncrasies, yes. so many things that we need to, we to first of all, be aware of. Like yeah. Ua said, mm -hmm. awareness is the, for, before you start treating an illness, you first yeah, of all well, need to diagnose and aware. Yeah. see it yeah. as a problem. Because yeah. I was going to come back again to say, what's this costing us as, as, mm -hmm. as, as, the, as a people, right? Mm -hmm. Not having this at the back of our mind, what's mm -hmm. it costing us? Because I, 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 I mean, you said something about diverse team outperform, right? Yeah. You know, if, if companies, CEOs, understand the power of diversity, equity, inclusion, do you think they would just look away? Do they know? And what's it costing them as a company? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. I think we can improve the situation with time, but we need awareness for that, awareness. right? And that's why... We want to take this first step to kind of set the baseline for, okay, this is where we're at now. And yeah. we want to make this a yearly recurring report so that we can see how our people or how our company is growing, awesome. right? And then hopefully we'll be able to show that companies that do well in this respect mm -hmm. also do well in other respects, like mm -hmm. employee satisfaction, and employee belonging, um, engagement, financial returns, all of that. So globally, we know this matters. But a lot of the global research is, of course, based on the Western countries. And so we're hoping that by focusing on Nigeria in particular, we can raise attention for this. Do you want to add something to that? Yeah. So are you doing something? So for those 18 companies that you found out that, mm. I mean, had very poor score sheets, are you doing something like recommendations? Are they even willing to hear what you people have to recommend? So this report is still fresh you know, fresh off the press. Yes, I saw so, it. <laughs> That's why we're happy to take it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, so still fresh off the press. We're going to, of course, circulate this. Uh, thankfully, the, um, the CEO of the Nigerian Exchange, uh, Mr. Temi Pukwola, he actually helped us launch this report um, just last week. And, awesome. you know, made, he, he also reiterated the commitment of the, of the stock exchange towards ensuring that you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is something that becomes uh, a mainstay in companies in Nigeria. So we're going to be circulating this report, and we're hoping that uh, leadership uh, in corporate Nigeria will take it seriously, and don't, uh, they won't just make it a tokenistic issue in the sense that, okay, let, how many, we, are, we, are short for, we have a shortfall of women, yeah? Let's find three women and put you know, on the board or something mm. like that. No, that's not the way to go about it. It's to look over, just look at your overall structure your your way of doing things and your mindset mm -hmm. and ask yourself uh how are we inadvertently overtly or covertly um suppressing women from getting ahead suppressing people from a particular ethnic group or ethnic mm -hmm. groups from getting ahead mm -hmm. uh, or people for, from a particular age range or educational background mm -hmm. uh, among other things how can we make sure that we have an inclusive uh, equitable environment in our company so it's it's you have to start from somewhere, and you know we're not we're not making any uh, we're not deceiving ourselves to think that tomorrow this will be solved. No, exactly. this is the, this is the first step. You know, it starts with awareness, uh, uh, proclaiming this message, and hopefully more people will get on it and and, and begin to make changes. Now let's look at it from uh, the educational background context. You said that. Um, Nigerians are known to be well educated and they were the ones that you know they were quite diversified in their education so in terms of what we currently have we all complain that currently in Nigeria the education sector is is abysmal currently mm -hmm. and yet you have a report that states that Nigerians love education so do you think that the government should pay more attention to, or Nigerians in general, should pay more attention to formal and informal education together. Right. Dr. Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll jump in after you. After you. Um, it's a hard question for me to answer um, because mm -hmm. I obviously didn't school here. Yeah. Um, 
in our research, we didn't make a distinction between, we didn't give extra points to people that were schooled abroad versus here or anything. We're really just looking at the different points of view. So we're not looking mm -hmm. necessarily at the quality of education, but just mm -hmm. Somebody that has been trained the as an engineer. The fact that the person has a degree. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then degree in which direction? Because you can imagine that somebody that is trained as like a scientist has a different perspective to yeah. problem solving, for example, yeah. than somebody that has a degree in arts. Yeah. Um, and so that's mm -hmm. what we really cared about in terms of just the perspective that they can bring to the table and like different voices and opinions. Yeah. Dr. Okay. Yeah. So uh, educational diversity for us is, like Miro said, uh, different views, uh, mm -hmm. different views. Um, so, <coughs> if you have a team of engineers, hmm. um, are you being blindsided uh, by being perhaps very empirical, as they will say, uh, the scientists are empirical. Mm. So, you are all about figures, does it add up, does it add up, mm. does it add up, and you're po possibly forgetting the human side yeah. of things. So, uh, we looked at STEM. Um, the science, technology, you know, engineering, engineering and math. math. And we also looked at the liberal arts. We looked at the pure arts as well and mm -hmm. looked at finance, at finance as four uh, main uh, uh, branches of education. Mm -hmm. And um, it, 21 companies in Nigeria got a perfect score wow. <laughs> on that, dime, on that uh, parameter. Mm -hmm. 21 companies got a perfect score, meaning that they had such a diverse board and management team hmm. they had people from these four works of life represented hmm. on their boards although it is fair to say that everybody generally had a management degree yeah. or a stem degree hmm. and less the liberal arts or the pure arts and those wow. were underrepresented uh, you'd have come to our feed now did you did you, <laughs> did you did you come to the media to come and now i have bad news for media why why what's the bad news do i <laughs> we also looked at the results per um, industry. Industry and media was the poorest scoring. Media, industry. media had the worst diversity, equity, wow. and inclusion. Yeah. In media wow. industry. In, in, what, what were the parameters that failed that failed the test the most? Um, all, all of them, unfortunately. Mm. Wow. Um, yes. Age, yes. ethnic, uh, diversity, yeah. everything. The, the, the media wow. industry had the had the lowest scores. I mean, the, in the report, you'll be able to find it. Uh, we we were we were surprised because you would think that uh, the media will be perhaps the most... Uh, no, it's not like that, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. Let's just not open our bum bum in the public. But, you know, I'm going to ask you, <laughs> right, as we're wrapping up this conversation, because we are having fun and the time is running away. Yeah. So what, we will, um, what will um, a healthy company that is positioned for success look like in terms of mm. diversity? Mm. If you want to say, okay, this is a very healthy company and it's the way mm -hmm. this plays out the DEI is well positioned for success what would that company look like okay so perhaps we'll talk about the companies that uh, performed very well okay uh, the best performing companies uh, in Nigeria or companies uh, in Nigeria you would see uh, Transco hotels um, had the highest score uh, the Transco Group, interestingly, the, the group company also ranked amongst the top 10 uh, in that. And uh, also Transco Hotels has a female MD, yeah, one yeah. of the few companies oh, yeah. that has one. Yeah. We yeah. love her. Yes. <laughs> we know her. Uh, uh, they did very well. And again, interestingly, um, they this year they reported, if I remember correctly, about a 700% increase, increase in their, in their Revenue. uh, revenues. Uh, or, or, or between last year and this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, can we draw a straight line and say diversity is what's causing it? Perhaps, perhaps not. But a diverse company is It's doing already well. positioned for success, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if a woman, I think it was Transco, I was watching the new policy on mm -hmm. health, ch yeah. on checks, uh, like um, mm -hmm. due to the COVID-19, mm -hmm. I, I saw a video uh, where they talked about, you know, cleaning, certain areas that you never have thought that somebody should be thinking about cleaning when it comes to, like, management, managing the hotel, mm -hmm. cleanliness and all of that and trying yeah. to prevent the COVID-19. So it's very possible that because there's a woman CEO in that company, mm -hmm. she's beginning to think. I mean, if I am a CEO of a company, I know how many things that my mind will run through that yeah. a man would just not understand take note right the man will not take note right so i uh, so I, I like that idea mm -hmm. i would just want you to break it more down like so um in terms of um age what was the age like 
in terms of ethnicity, what was it like? In terms of educational background, what was it like for that company? Maybe we should just stay on that company. So um, I'm just I'm just looking at their scores now. A Transco Hotel, they had a total of 76 out of 100 mm -hmm. in terms of the total score. Um, for gender diversity, they got 25 over 25. Wow. Um, for age diversity, they had 17 over 25. For ethnic diversity, they had 15 over 25. And for educational diversity, they had 19 over 25. What is a healthy age diversity? I'm very curious about mm. that. Because you know why? Most companies that want to recruit, they tell you, oh, graduate trainees are like, you shouldn't be more than 25 and all yeah. of that. You said in age, right? Yeah. So what is a healthy age diversity for you? What's your parameter for age diversity and that you can score it good, good score? Yeah. yeah. So we wanted representation from different age groups, right? Okay. So we classified age groups as like 40 to 45, 45 to 50, etc. And what you would hope to see is that not all of your board and all of your senior management is between the age of 50 and 60. Hmm. Right, and what we would especially hope to see is that also underrepresented groups are being represented, and that's the younger people in Nigeria. Yeah. Hmm. Somebody that's you know 38 years old can have plenty of business experience to yeah. have yeah. earned that seat at the table, mm -hmm. but that's not happening very often. I think we saw it was about two percent of two percent, all yeah. um, senior management. Senior management, uh, senior management, two percent, less than two percent are um, less than 40. Wow. So, hmm. so, so basically, you have to be an old man or old woman to be in leadership in Nigeria. Mm. Um, we were having a very interesting conversation, and, and I say this with a lot of respect. A lot of the people who currently occupy um, leadership positions in mm -hmm. Nigeria got there quite early. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lucky generation we in Nigeria. We fail woefully <laughs> yeah. if you take this put to politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lucky generation in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Those people who finished university before 1984, those people have finished. They're a very lucky generation. I don't know how to say it, but the, if you look, if you look very well, the math in Nigeria, you would mm -hmm. see that um, these guys started a lot of the businesses you see in Nigeria now, and a lot of them have been at the helm of affairs, you know, for well, 20, 25 years, Over. and they're still there. And um, then you know, you have the the proper generation X, who unfortunately are bearing the brunt as it were, in Nigeria, still quite, let, almost Nigeria's forgotten generation. Hmm. So we have, uh, in our society, age is power. Age is power. The older you are, the more respected you are, perhaps the more infallible you become. Uh, you can't question an old person. You know, it's not in our, in our society, in our tradition. So um, uh, older people, yes, indeed have power. Hmm. Uh, we looked at the boards, we looked at uh, management teams, and we found that the average age of the CEO is 54, hmm. 54 years old. So 54 year old uh, is average age uh, CEOs. Well, um, maybe not too old. If you look at other countries as well, you might also uh, see that. Yeah? But it, we are heavily skewed more towards the 50 and 60 year olds hmm. than the 40 and uh, under 40s. And the 30s. Yeah. Hmm. And so, what is the ripple effect of this? Well, um, perhaps it means that we would uh, when you had the next generation of leaders, they probably wouldn't have had enough experience. Enough experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, enough experience. So, you know, um, it's something that we need to create. Uh, mm. We need to create that platform. Again, we're not saying that you should now go and fill up your boards or your management teams with younger people, but it is systemic. It's showing you that there's a system that uh, puts you, that basically puts you on the line for a long time. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, perhaps it's also a reflection of the of our economy. Maybe if our economy is a lot better, you would have more young uh, entrepreneurs starting businesses like Early. the Zuckerbergs of this world. When we don't have enough of them, but I think the Nigeria. fintech space they are doing amazingly well. Mm. Yeah. For our population size, yeah, well, is it might seem like a drop in the ocean, yeah. but. They are doing amazingly well. <laughs> I was going to quickly say, because we ran out of time, I was going to ask that, um, are you planning to take this uh, report or this research into governance in Nigeria? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a sensitive <laughs> topic. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. cannot yeah. help us out now. Well, What's where? Maybe. <laughs> we, you, you see, for us, we are concerned about corporate Nigeria mm -hmm. because majority of the people in Nigeria are employed uh, by organizations. The government indeed as standalone is a large employer of mm -hmm. labor but um, we believe that corporate Nigeria is where the action is happening. Yeah. yeah, And perhaps 
You are just the, running away from politics. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I would, I would, I would side him on this. I would concur with him because he's good. What to do you want away. to concur? He, stay away from. No, politics. you don't get it. So th the thing is, right? If we want to make a much more impactful change, we are all looking for better. A better Nigeria, right? That mm -hmm. has inclusion, equity, and all of that. Yeah. We also need to infiltrate the people that are decision makers, policy yeah. makers, right? Yeah. You know, I'm just saying. Reality yeah, speaking. Yeah, this is a start. Who yeah, knows? but this is fantastic. Yeah. We'd, we'd love to bring you guys back on again. Let yeah. us also see the progress reports. Maybe you come on. Come on, check our own company out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there. I'm not the one that invited you. <laughs> All right, thank you so thank much, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Okay. okay. Thank you. We've had a fantastic, fantastic <laughs> conversation. Thank you, Isi <laughs> Thank you. All right, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Waysho Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. And more importantly, we're planning a giveaway to say thank Oh, no, sorry. We started a giveaway to say thank you to you for believing in the Waze brand. So follow us on Waze oh, so you can see all the goodies that are available for giveaways. Um, um, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Diversity is having a seat at the table. Inclusion is having a voice. And belonging is having that voice be heard. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy.